Good morning. Today's passage is Matthew chapter 21, verses 33 through 46. Matthew 21, 33 through 46. Let's read the word of God together. Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized his servants. They beat one, killed another, and stoned the third. Then he sent other servants to them, more than the first time. And the tenants treated them the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? He will bring those wretched wretches to a wretched end, they replied. And he will rent the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him his share of the crop at harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is a marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people who will produce its fruit. Anyone who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and anyone on whom it falls will be crushed. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard Jesus' parable, they knew he was talking about them. They looked for a way to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowd because the people held that he was a prophet. The Pharisees were offended. They knew that Jesus was talking about them. They, they knew that the parables uh, were about them. They wanted to kill Jesus, we read in the very uh, uh, last verse of our section. They wanted to arrest him right there. But what stopped them? They were afraid of the crowd. But indirectly, they were afraid of the Romans. The people thought that Jesus was a prophet from God. Arresting Jesus at that moment would have caused an uprising. A disturbance the Romans would surely frown upon. The Pharisees wanted to maintain peace, not because of respect or fear of the Romans, but because they didn't want the Romans snooping around. They relatively enjoyed this uh, uh, autonomy, if you will. They were still under the oppression of Romans, but the Pharisees had established a, um, a religious establishment where they controlled many elements of that. It's interesting that they fear the crowd more than they fear God. They wanted to arrest Jesus. They rejected Him. But they stopped. Why? Because they were afraid of the crowd. And what really stands out about the, from these final verses of our session is really the hardness of the Pharisees. It shows the state of the Pharisees and gives us an insight into the religious establishment. The hardness of the Pharisees is evident in two ways, jealousy and pride. <coughs> the Pharisees could not stand Jesus' popularity. They were jealous. They couldn't understand why the people liked Him so much. You know, I think the Pharisees really liked having that control over the people. You see, they were the religious elite. They were the learned ones in society. They were, um, they were the ones with the knowledge. They held great power over the common, unlearned, uneducated people. This brought them a tremendous amount of status, control, and power. They were the specialists whom the people came to for answers and guidance. And then here's Jesus. Jesus comes along. He threatens their system, their authority and power. Jesus taught with authority. It was clear to anyone who heard him speak that Jesus knew his stuff. He knew his stuff unlike anyone else that the people had heard. Isn't that something that we can tell right away? Whether someone really knows their stuff? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to discern whether or not someone knows what they're talking about. You listen to them, and we can tell. This person knows, or this person doesn't know. Jesus knew what he was talking about. He taught with authority. He was a threat, and they were jealous. Perhaps even envious 
of his popularity. So we see the jealousy, but we also see the pride of the Pharisees. They knew the parable was about them. They knew that Jesus was talking about them. Look at verse 43. Therefore I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people who will produce its fruits. Jesus warned the religious leaders that if they continue the rejection of God's Messiah, God will give their leadership to someone else. No one talked to the Pharisees this way. Remember, they were the religious elite. They're the ones that people went for answers. No one talked to them this way, but they were not accustomed to being told off, especially in front of the crowds. But you know, this wasn't the only time that we see Jesus doing this. It's not the only time that Jesus calls them out or embarrasses them in front of the crowd. Several examples that we see in the book of Matthew, for example. Matthew 6, 5 says this, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Who are the hypocrites that Jesus is referring to? The Pharisees, the religious leaders. Matthew 15, 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Who is Jesus referring to? Who is he talking about? The religious leaders. Jesus points to an outward expression of faith that is empty. Just rhetoric, just a show. Their heart was not in it. In Matthew 21, verse 31, it says this, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. Jesus is telling the religious leaders, the Pharisees, that they will not enter the kingdom of God. They had been trusted with the kingdom of God, but they rejected the king's son. They are the tenants in the parable. The religious leaders thought that they were the elite, that they held special uh, privilege. When Jesus says even the tax collectors and the prostitutes will get into the kingdom of God ahead of you, this was an embarrassing moment for them. They are the tenants in the parable. What do the tenants do? Look at verse 38 and 39. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him. Take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Those who should have known, because they had a deeper knowledge of the scriptures, rejected the king's son. Because their pride was hurt, because they were embarrassed by Jesus in front of the cross, they determined to kill him. Ironically, just as Jesus predicted in the, ter- in the parable. Matthew 21 verse 32 says this, For John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. Even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. The tax collectors and the prostitutes believed John's message. But the religious leaders did not. They refused to believe. They refused to repent and believe. And now, they refuse to believe in Jesus. After David sins with Bathsheba, Nathan comes to confront David. Nathan tells a story of a rich man who took a lamb from a poor man. David becomes angry. He cannot believe the injustice. He cannot believe what the rich man would do, that he would take from such a poor person. When Nathan reveals that the rich man in his story was David, David immediately repented and confessed his sin. In that, we see his humility his heart of faith. Yes, he sinned greatly, but but he confessed. We see that his heart was not hardened. The Pharisees, on the other hand, throughout their interactions with Jesus, we see the hardness of their heart. Instead of repenting, they doubled down. They wanted to arrest Jesus. But the New King James Version translates this as this. They wanted to lay their hands on him. Lay their hands on him, to me, is a much more violent imagery. It's almost they wanted to grab him, take him away, grab him by force, lay their hands on him. Often that is an expression of of hitting, spanking, or whatever the uh, imagery is. It's it's not just simply 
or they wanted to arrest him. They wanted to lay their hands on him. Perhaps like a mob mentality to take him away, even stoning him. That's kind of the imagery that I, I get when I read that translation. Hardened heart makes it impossible to, to see Jesus for who he is. You must, you must have a heart of faith. Do you have this kind of faith? Would you pray, Jesus, change my heart. Give me a childlike faith. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you will give us a heart. Heart like David. If there is a hardness in our heart, we pray, Father, that you would just change our hearts. Soften it. Give us a heart of faith, a childlike faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. My prayer and my desire is that that you will crave, that you will desire, you will ask. Lord, change my heart. Give me a childlike faith. A heart of faith. God bless you. Have a great day.